Mr. Brennan. Good morning, Your Honors. My name Good. is uh, Attorney Paul Brennan. Good morning. And I represent the um, defendant appellant, Karen Afonso. I suppose Your Honors expect me to come today to defend what's probably many consider to be an anachronistic statutory language, and that's certainly the argument of the Commonwealth uh, that um, the provision in um, uh, Section 24A relating to the um, 28, excuse me, relating to the uh, sentence appeals to the appellate division of the um, of the Superior Court, as it pertains to appeals from the, uh, to sentences to the reformatory of women, has in effect been repealed by the Truth and Sentencing Laws because um, there are no more reformatory sentences. But do uh, we have Do we have to even get there? I mean, I, I, your client was sentenced to a three to five year sentence to MCI Cedar Junction, that's the state prison. That's correct, yeah. To be served at MCI Framingham. That's, that's really not, the fact that it's going to be served at one place or another is quite irrelevant to whether the sentence was a state prison sentence. Well, uh, do, with all due respect, you know, I, I contend, and uh, based upon the authority of this court in the case of Moulton versus Commonwealth, that a female could never receive a state prison sentence if she was sent to MCI. Well, going one step further from Justice Cordy's question, aren't references to places to be served really superfluous anyway because isn't the Department of Correction in control of where the person is placed? I mean, uh, they could theoretically have put this woman in jail, I suppose. Uh, I, the department, yes, uh, but the Commissioner for Corrections uh, does have power to move an inmate from one position right, to another. Right, so the, the language, possibly the judges shouldn't even say that anymore, and it's, it's just superfluous, and we should read it out of the uh, sentencing, because it has no meaning. Well, uh, with all due respect, the, 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 the precedent is that uh, the, a sentence to uh, MCI Framingham, uh, that a female has to be, a female convicted of a felony under uh, Chapter uh, 279, Section 19, has to be sentenced to MCI framing. No, 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 it doesn't so say that. So it doesn't that. have to be sentenced. It has to be served there because there's no other place to well, serve it. Well, the, the Moulton decision says, that in effect, that means that she has to be sentenced to Framingham, and that is not the equivalent of but the state But Moulton sentence. was based in large part on the fact that there were independent budgets, which there certainly are today. There's no independent budget for Framingham. Well, I don't think that, uh, I, I don't know that, Jan. I have the Commonwealth's word for it in its brief, but there's no, but be, be that as it may, I don't think that was the only consideration that the court gave in Moulton for determining that a sentence that a female could never be a sentence, excuse me, that a sentence to MCI Framingham is not the equivalent of a state but sentence. But the, the whole statutory scheme, the sentencing scheme, is very different today than it was at the time in Moulton. Well, Your Honor, with all due respect, I would say that until the time of the uh, um, um, repeal of the um, reform to sentence scheme, it was pretty much the same. Uh, in fact, so, um, if you, if you, if you, so, you know. if we rule in your favor. No woman who was sent to Framingham from the Superior Court can seek relief in the appellate division. That's not correct, Your Honor. If, what happens is that if a sentence is to Framingham for more than five years, yes. That's, All that's right. what's. I'll revise that. <coughs> Under five years, no woman can seek relief. The, yeah, that's correct, Your Honor. My client is, not, my client is now saying that uh, the, the appellate division of the Superior Court. Uh, could not uh, could not hear her case because she was sentenced to five years in effect to MCI Framingham. A judge did not have the power or authority to sentence her to state prison. Well, that, that, wouldn't that raise equal protection problems because well, men can and women can't? If we well, accept your argument. Well, if if my argument is correct, uh, that raises a, 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 a difficult, very difficult question, Your Honor, uh, which was not considered by the the motion judge below. I would, however, point out that this court uh, in the uh, case of. Um, I believe, I, I'm sorry, I believe it was DuPont versus the Commissioner for Correction, which was decided, decided by this court last February, went into a lengthy analysis about equal protection as it pertains to male and well, female. E equal protection isn't raised in this case. Well, the, sorry, Commonwealth, the Commonwealth raises it. Right, Commonwealth raises it, which, um, which in fact it was quite strange, uh, which uh, to me is very opportunistic. I would assume that the, due, the uh, obligation of the Attorney General's office is to uphold, uh, to argue for upholding the constitutionality of the laws of the Commonwealth, not to opportunistly. Well, he gives us several reasons why we can uphold it on statutory grounds and we won't have a problem. I mean, why we can Alan, interpret it. The, the, well, in fact, well, then if I may get back to, then to the statutory scheme that we your honor uh, referred to. My contention is that until the reform, <coughs> uh, enactment of the truth and sentencing laws, the statutory scheme was pretty much the same from the, some, from the time of Moulton until then. 
Um, and but now it's different. We well, that's true. Right. So the question, so the question, and the case we're faced okay. with is now. So, so the question then is, if by the enacting the truth and sentencing law, does that in fact, uh, and re therefore repealing reformatory sentences, does that in, in effect uh, repeal the decision? Well, of course, the, the, the decision interpreted no uh, in, yeah. this decision interpreted a statute. A statute. That statute doesn't exist anymore. That's, that's, it, there's no reformatory well, anymore. Uh, I mean, how, how can we say that women can only be sentenced to a reformatory? We said that in 1913 when the statute provided that, and now there's no reformatory, and MCI, Framingham is not a reformatory. Yeah, it's a it's, correctional institution. Your Honor, if you, if you, I direct your attention again to Moulton, but they were interpreting uh, Section 19 of Chapter 278. And in that case, it said, in that case, um, the, the, the uh, court held that if a, that uh, every woman convicted of a felony must be uh, sent to Framingham, and the court held, therefore, that means the to reformatory the re for women. Okay, and That's because Framingham was at that time a reformatory for women. And, and it's not anymore. Well, there was it was it's just been a name change. Never, there's no statute that says reformatory for women has been abolished. It said that what happened was that in 1952, in some uh, se sections here and there, there was um, uh, there were changes in the, n the nomenclature from uh, reformatory women to MCI Framingham, but it didn't say the reformatory for women is abolished. And in fact, if you look at the reformatory sections, uh, the, the, the section re pertaining to reformatory sentences, uh, the sections 16 and 17 of Chapter 279, the name reformatory for women was in that statute until 1972. So, it was so, only, it was only but 19... it's not now. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> it doesn't exist today. I'm sorry, Jan? You agree that the reformatory for women does not exist today? Well, I, I, exist, I, I respectfully submit that the reformatory for women doesn't exist today in this sense that the name has changed to MCI Framingham, but the particular institution that was created uh, is, is still the same. Can we agree, Physically can still we the same. agree Mr. Blennon, that, there is no, that, that what the legislature did at a minimum was to abolish reformatory Correct. sentences. I agree with that, Your Honor. So but they it abolished the formatory sentences. And the question is, when they abolished the formatory sentences, did that render no longer applicable a sentence, a proper sentence, not a, not a reformatory sentence, to the reformatory for women. Ex exactly, Your Honor. You got to, yeah, this is the heart of the matter. I agree with you. This, you got to the heart of the matter. And I would like to say with respect to that, that when the legislature enacted the Truth and Sentencing Statute, which is really, it's not a general statute. It was just a, a special statute amending ones, basically filling the knobs here and there. But it never said that this, that the, it never, it, while it did specifically repeal the statute per, uh, pertaining to reformatory sentences, it never said that, um, that uh, females could be sentenced to state prison. And I, that is important because it's a rule of statutory construction that legislatures presume to know this decision, prior decisions of this court interpreting the law. And so when the, statu when the legislature uh, abolished the reformatory sentences, that does, uh, what it left, what it um, it, it did not necessarily mean that a female could be sentenced, uh, could give, be given an indeterminate sentence under Section 24 to state prison. Well, it's very funny that you quote Moulton because Moulton has a sentence in here that says, um, if, however, it is true there is no express repeal, if, however, a prior statute is repugnant to the subsequent act, the presumption is that the latter statute is intended as the final expression of the legislative will, and the former statute is necessarily repealed by implication. And I'm reading right from the Moulton case. And isn't that more or less what we have here? We have... Um, the uh, legislation in the 1990s that repealed the reformatories in total, and they just didn't um, repeal the statute, so, but this statute is now repugnant to, to what we um, now have, so there's a repeal by implication. I, with all due respect, I, I don't agree that it's repugnant. I mean, it may be anomalous. Anomalous it may be. At least inconsistent, because well, we don't have a reformatory. Well, and not, well the, this uh, the, the, the nomenclature it's the nomenclature. I think you're almost getting stuck up in the nomenclature. The reformatory for women is now the MCF framing. That, that was enacted. Then. I beg your pardon. I'm not stuck up on nomenclature. Mm -hmm. That's what your whole case is about. You're, this whole 
um, appeal is because of nomenclature. Otherwise That's correct, John, and it was changed. And it, 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 I think it was in 1952, it said that MCI, that former tree for women shall now be known as MCI Fragment. That's all it said. It didn't abolish it. No, it's, but it changed. It, the whole sentencing scheme was changed, and the types of the prisons and the types of sentences were changed, even. But not until 1970, 19, can, not until 1994, Your Honor. Can a superior right. court judge sentence a woman to Framingham for um, terms of like three to five, or does it have to be for a fixed a, term? A fixed term, Your Honor. Where do you, and where do you get that? Well, if because it, uh, it, the indeterminate sentence under Section 24. Uh, apply only to state sentences. So they have to be sent for three years, five years, that's whatever correct. the fixed and then, term well, is. Wait, I, I you're you're, that's you're saying that a, a woman cannot be sentenced to a state prison sentence. That's correct. Yeah. And, and you, find in that in, you find that where in our law? Uh, well, for, I've, I direct your Honor's attention to the um, case of Commonwealth versus Graham, which gives them, um, um, if I may give, get the site, please. In fact, in this case, the woman was sentenced to three to five at Framingham, which, as That's far correct, as I yeah. know, is the typical so, practice. No. She was sentenced to state prison right. to be served at Framingham. Right. Yes, but the sentence was three to five. It wasn't a set number. It was a minimum and a maximum. That's correct, Your Honor. But That's my contention is that because, <laughs> Your Honor, but is it, it's also a rule of statutory construction. If the, uh, this court cannot impl supply words that the legislature didn't put there. If the legislature did not see fit, to abolish, to, to say that women can be sentenced to state prison when, the, when the, there were prior decisions of this court interpreting the statutory scheme. As interpreting a completely different statutory scheme from 100 years ago. Well, Your Honor, when the, when the, stat, when the, when the, um, when the truth in sentencing statute was enacted, it still did not say that women could be sentenced to state prison. You're saying that, well, are you saying then that all, any woman who's in state prison has been sentenced there illegally. unlawfully? And well, they're, they're not in state prison. They're framing them. But I'm there. saying that the sentences that they receive, uh, that three to, these indeterminate state prison sentences are illegal, yes. But nor, what I think I respectfully suggest that the, the proper uh, sentencing structure is like when, if you go to if you get a house of correction sentence, you, excuse me, you get you get a straight you get a set, set a definite sentence. So and, and your parole eligibility is set by, by at discretion of the uh, of the parole board. The parole so board can set parole eligibility. I respectfully suggest if we got some women down in Framingham, which we surely have, that yes. were sentenced in this fashion and went to the appellate division and got their sentences reduced, but they're still at Framingham, we're going to have to bring them all back and resentence them. Uh, well, if they, if, they, if they ask to be brought back, I, I don't think they would be, Your Honor. But because this, the sentences are illegal. Well, if, 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 Your Honor, I, from, I can only speak from my client. I'm just saying, in my particular case, I'm suggesting that a sentence... Well, I'm trying to find the implications of this. I, my, I, all I can say, Your Honor, is that, that uh, under this... Um, the, the proper way to sentence a female is to give her a definite sentence, and then the parole board determines. Uh, Let me ask you this. Was that equal protection point made in the trial court? No, Your Honor. There was a so why are we talking about it here? You say it's raised on appeal. If it wasn't, well, raised, the, 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 the it wasn't raised in the trial court, where I thought it wasn't raised, it's not before us. Well, as the Commonwealth has raised it in its brief, Your Honor, I only address it because okay. the Commonwealth has raised it. But isn't that the short answer to it? I, I'm sorry, Your Honor? wasn't raised in the trial court. That's the oh, well, I, I agree. I, mean, I don't think the constitutionality is uh, before this But court. if we interpret the statute your way and interpreting it your way, we create an equal protection problem. We would, we would have to reach it because we can't interpret a statute. We reach it in the next case when Wait, someone uh, actually argues. Well, yes, yeah, so Your Honor could say prospectively we think this might be unconstitutional, but as far as my client, my client's not claiming it's unconstitutional. Did you argue below that your client should have received a Definite sentence, a one-number sentence. Uh, I argued below that the sentence was illegal because she could not be sentenced to state prison. I didn't say I argued. Okay, you uh, never no. argued below that this should have been a, a straight five-year sentence. No, Your Honor. That, so well, that's not before the, us. Well, either. well, we, uh, Your, Your Honor asked me. I propose what the proper sentencing scheme should be. If she was sent back for resentencing, I would respectfully submit it would be. Uh, a determined but sentence. you aren't asking for resentencing. You're simply asking that the you're simply claiming that the appellate division had no jurisdiction, so she should go back to her original concurrent sentence rather than on and after. Is that well, I, I, I think, Your Honor, if Your Honor found that my, my argument was correct, that you could order for remand for resentencing. But that isn't what you asked for. Well, um, well, we could. We, we could, could, Your Honor. 
think we got it. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Thank Glennon. You. Levitz. Randall Ravitz for the Commonwealth. Uh, the Superior Court properly denied Ms. Alfonso's Rule 30A motion. Uh, the language at issue here refers to a type of sentence that no longer exists. Uh, even if this Court were to conclude otherwise, it should find that the restriction on appeals by females sentenced to terms of five years or less within that language should be found impliedly repealed. And if it were to reject either of those inter uh, two interpretations, uh, we would be left with a situation where Section 28A denies females equal rights of appeal to males, and would, it would therefore offend several canons of statutory construction. Do, do, you, do you agree that, that there are no longer any sentences to the reformatory for women? That's right. Reformatory so the, the, the fact that, that certain sentences to the reformatory for women can be uh, appeals, can be brought to the appellate division, is all very interesting, but it's irrelevant because they don't exist anymore. The language is meaningless. It's, so it's, why do we talk about reformatory sentences? Why didn't the legislature, the legislature say they shall no longer, I mean... They did. That's what they did it, in the 1990, well, 1994. Wait a Chapter 279, Section 16 says that a female may be sentenced to the MCI Framingham. You mean a judge cannot give a woman a two-and-a-half-year sentence or a three-year sentence to MCI Framingham? A, a, no, a, a woman, uh, a judge can give such a uh, <coughs> sentence, but it would be a state prison sentence no, 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 to no, be executed. Right. But you, you, could you give the equivalent of a House of Correction sentence to MCI Framingham? Can you, can you give a female... Not an indeterminate sentence, but a definite sentence of two years to MCI Framingham. Because, it, because chapter 279, section 16 says that a female may be sentenced to MCI Framingham. Right. It, it would be a, a house of correction sentence, though. So the answer is yes, but it would be a house of correction sentence. It wouldn't be a reformatory sentence. And under Chapter 279, Section 19, well, you, the statute says the sentence to imprisonment of a female shall be executed at MCI Framingham. Now, that's does my, that that's, mean... That's does, section does, 19. Excuse, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that if a woman gets a... A woman may get a state prison sentence, but it will be executed at MCI Has Framingham? Executed. That's right. It would be executed at the, the building that's called MCI Framingham. Yeah. But it's a state prison sentence as far as the type of sentence. In Chapter 279, Section 24, the indeterminate sentence to state prisons doesn't say that only men can get a state prison sentence. The, that's so any convict who gets That's correct. State. That's correct. Um, do you agree that, um, or don't you agree, that the words in the judge's uh, sentencing order are in just superfluous? He, he could have said, and, and probably he should have said, although I know it's the um, standard to say the other way, should have just said, sentenced to a, a three to five MCI uh, uh, seat of junction, and then DOC decides where she serves. That's right. So if, if the judge had said that, it would still be the case. So we could why, doesn't she just, why doesn't the judge, I can't remember if it was a male or female sentencing judge, just say to be served in a, three to five to be served in a state prison? Apparently, uh, judges have been for, yeah, for a number want, of years. You, you don't want to send a woman to see the junction. You don't want if the, right. you want a sentence. You want to make clear whether you've got a, you know, a state prison sentence. But that is a sentence to Cedar Junction. The statute defines That's, a state prison sentence as a sentence to Cedar Junction. Exactly. So the judge could have just stopped three to five at MCI Cedar Junction. Period. That's and right. Probably should have. Although I know the practice is to go maybe, on. Maybe right. yes. Maybe the, not. Because the judge probably is also looking at two seventy nine section nineteen. <laughs> Well, it's, it's a practice that's, uh, that judges have been doing it's a, for it's years. A, it's a practice that may be required by 279, Section 19. Do you know the, if uh, women such as this woman, once they're sentenced in this fashion, are processed at Cedar Junction, or do they go directly for processing to Framingham? I, I believe they go to, uh, to Framingham. Mm -hmm. But it, we would submit that this is analogous to a situation where uh, a judge sentences a man to MCI Cedar Junction, and... He ends up serving the sentence elsewhere. And in those cases... But, but we don't have... What's different here for women, I take it, is 279, Section 19, at least when you've got a felony, which is, you know, presumably most of the state prison sentences, if not all, says, shall be executed in the Massachusetts Correctional Institution in Framingham. 
You don't have that for men. It, if you define the state prison as Cedar Junction, fine, that's okay for men. But the legislature said, but for women, it's got to be. Um, but it used the term executed at. That means so, served. So, so it's, not, it's not describing a type of sentence. No, 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 I understand that. But I'm, I'm saying why judges may put that in because the statute requires the, it. The corrections department um, is not even bound by that, are they? If they got this woman or some other woman similarly situated, and they decided she might do better in a house of correction environment. Some houses of correction take Framingham inmates, I think. In fact, I know. They could move her to a house of correction, could they not? Um, I'm not I'm not certain about that. But they certainly could move her to another facility out of state, and very often do if there were a danger situation, well, they, despite the fact that the judge says three to five um, seat a junction to be served at Framingham, if DOC decided for her own safety or anybody's safety she had to go to New Hampshire or Texas, she would go, and nobody would ever. Yeah, so I guess I'm, what I'm leading up to is maybe the judge's language is superfluous. The sentence, in fact, was as suggested was to MCI Cedar Junction. He was thinking, well, I know DOC is going to put her in Framingham. They have to. I know they can put her in a house of correction, perhaps. I don't think they, they can, can put her in a house of corrections under 279.19. Can they? It's an administrative it's transfer. It's an administrative they transfer. Can. In the fact, and I know they're serving, women are serving this up in um, Ludlow and Hamden County. They're just administratively transferred to serve their sentences. So we could treat his language as superfluous, really right. as a direction, but not a mandate. Right. Uh, to the commissioner of the DOC, in which case the sentence is okay, and we don't have to get into this um, web of ancient history. Well, and certainly this, this appeal could be decided just based on the facts of this particular case. It, it probably would be useful to uh, provide guidance to, to, to other attorneys who might be inclined to to misread the statute, though. Um, did you raise your equal protection argument in the Superior Court? We, our argument in the Superior Court was, was only based on the facts of the particular case, the, the language used by, by the judge. Your, your equal protection argument is that we should construe the statute in harmony with the Constitution. That's right, that men and women should have equal rights to appeal. And, and uh, my brother's in the ironic position of arguing that his client, a woman, should have lesser rights to appeal well, than a male. Well, because if you have equal Some rights to appeal, you also have equal rights to have your sentence lengthened, which is what happened in this case. That's true, but it, but it still wouldn't be, no, it wouldn't no, be equal. I understand. Right. I mean, you usually take an appeal because you think you're going to persuade the appellate, um, you know, of the division. division of the Superior Court to reduce it, and they have the, the authority oh, and the reason. power to increase it, which they did. That whole appellate division is, is kind of... Uh, funny business to be raising I mean it doesn't exist in any other court I know it's been around a long time well anyway if there are no further questions from the panel thank you Mr. <laughs> Rest in our brief thank you